Welcome back to the Plastic Surgery Podcast. This week we are going to be discussing cosmetic surgery again. Um, And the topic that we will be discussing within cosmetic surgery is going to be soft tissue fillers. We kind of brushed over this last week, but we didn't go into any detail with this topic. So we thought it would be uh, beneficial to have a separate episode dedicated specifically for soft tissue fillers. So, Dr. Viennes, when would somebody need soft tissue fillers? Well, during the aging process, we develop wrinkles and areas of depression on the face, and those areas can be improved upon with soft tissue fillers, Mm -hmm. things like wrinkles in the face, and um, there are areas of depression that can occur in the temple areas along the lower eyelid and the cheeks and around the folds of the face. Mm-hmm. So it's basically just to smooth out the the face? Correct. Right? Yep. They're just used on the face? Um, you can use them elsewhere too, but okay. typically they're used in the face. Yes. Okay, got it. All right. Um, what types of fillers are available for patients to use? Well, bovine collagen was the first FDA-approved filler that was available to us, but one of the problems was that patients would develop um, allergic reactions mm-hmm. to the filler. It wouldn't last very long. But now we have various uh, types of substances that are used. For example, hyaluronic acid, which is a substance that's found in your body, uh, areas in the tissues as well as in the joints. And now they can manufacture it through DNA recombinant technologies. So this is a filler that's used mostly nowadays for treating wrinkles and areas of depression on the face. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned bovine collagen is that correct Mm -hmm. and you said that was the first fda filler that was approved yes hyaluronic acid is that also fda approved yes it is it is um and then are there any other fillers besides hyaluronic acid i know you said that that's the most popular correct correct to use um what other are there any other uh types of fillers well there's a substance that is made up of similar material as your bone. It's mm-hmm. called hydroxyapatite, and this can be used as a means of filling areas of depression. There are other products as well. There's one that has an acrylic-based material, which is a synthetic material that is, can be used. Um, we also can use fat tissue from the patient that we can inject into the areas of depression as well. Mm-hmm. And there's one more um, substance that I've used in the past And that is a uh, material that is a synthetic material as well. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to the suture, the dissolvable suture material that we use for surgery. Mm -hmm. That's used to stitch up uh, wounds or incisions. And this material can be used as a suspension. They basically take the this material and uh, solubilize it inside um, water, and you can inject it into the tissues. And that actually recruits the body's own collagen material, helps stimulate that response of bringing in cells that create uh, collagen and scar tissue. Mm. And that could be used as a way of filling uh, soft tissue as well, but it takes several sessions to get that result. Uh, Okay, so out of all those, why is hyaluronic acid so popular? Well, there are a few things that, that are important in a filler. One is biocompatibility, a substance that can have a low reaction, allergic reaction, something that can last relatively long, but you also don't want anything that'll be permanent either because permanent substances that are injected into the body can cause harmful effects. So the advantage of hyaluronic acid is that it has low allergic reactions. It is biocompatible. It can last relatively long. Um, Some of these materials can last to about a year or so, depending on where you inject them and the type of filler that you use. On top of that, the fillers that are available within the hyaluronic acid family can be now made in different consistencies. Some are more fluid-like that can be used on the finer wrinkles, and some are thicker that can be injected into the deeper structures such as the fat layers to give you more um, fill and volume such as the cheek areas. Uh, since you just mentioned that uh, the thinner versus thicker types of substances, types of substances, sorry, where would be 
uh, a, like a thinner substance used. You just mentioned that a thicker substance would be used like in the cheek, correct? Correct. But where would like a thinner substance be used? So indications for the thinner material would be in and around the fine lines of the face, the, those those areas that are very superficial where you don't want a whole lot of soft tissue bulk. Right. Um, but the, the thicker material that's available, those that have a thicker viscosity, can be injected into, as we mentioned, around the cheeks. There are hollows that occur around in the temple area as we age. Um, there are areas that are folds in mm. the face. So, like, what would what would thinner be? Thinner would be what, like, like above, like the the eyelid. Well, or? Um, it just for example, uh, around the mouth. Also, you can all use the thinner material around the lips to augment the lips to make them fuller. Other areas where you would like to have thinner. Um, uh, material injected is along the junction between the lower eyelid and the cheek. As we age, the fat tissue tends to um, atrophy or get decrease its volume, and the ligaments and structures that hold everything in place on your skeletal uh, tissue uh, tend to relax. And so, so there's slumping that occurs of the of the soft tissue. And sagging, and that can create areas of a, like a tear trough area, which is the junction between that lower eyelid and the cheek. And that area can be filled in also with the thinner uh, hyaluronic acid. Putting something that has a thicker consistency, though, can leave lumps and bumps under the very thin skin of the lower eyelid. Mm -hmm. Nothing gets injected above the eyelid, right? No. Are, are, Nothing, right? There's no, there's no really like. Well, you that can, occur. yes, you can, you can inject on the upper eyelid as well. Um, you have to be very careful. Really? Anytime you inject in the central face, um, those areas have a lot of blood vessels, right. and you would like to avoid those because they can cause a lot of harm um, with the eye, such as blindness or injection into the brain, which could lead to potential stroke. Right. So you have to be very careful in that central zone of the face, especially around the eyes and the nose. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I, I didn't think, just like thinking back on that question I asked, I didn't, I meant below the eyelid, not above. I didn't right. think but that you, people but, would get but, above the eyelid. Well, there, there, there are areas that you can augment or improve in fullness of the upper eyelid. The aesthetics of the eye are such that the patient may have, as they age, loss of volume around the structures that support the eye. So there may be some hollowing mm. that occurs that's more evident along the upper eyelid. Mm. And somebody that has a more youthful eye, they have more fullness of the tissue. So as we age, the hollowness occurs around the upper eyelid, and it has a sunken look. And mm. in order to improve that aesthetic of fullness, along, especially along the outer part of the eye below the eyebrow and on the inner area, mm. you can inject some of this um, filler material. But again, you have to be extremely careful around the eye. Ah, okay. So uh, you kind of mentioned uh, a stroke could be like one of the negative effects of a filler, even though um, it's, a, it's rare that it's that happens. It's extremely rare. rare. These, these right. things are very rare, fortunately. Right. But, but uh, before you go into that, what are some other negative effects that could that could occur from a patient receiving fillers. Okay, so again, as we mentioned, um, the injection of, of blood vessel, right? Um, can some lead to of the stroke, effects right. it could lead to a stroke. It right. could lead to blindness, and it could potentially oh, lead too. to yep. Mm. It could also lead to loss of skin. Again, these are very rare. That's why it's important to have someone who will be injecting you that is properly trained right. and has experience in these areas and has the credentials mm -hmm. for performing these uh, procedures. Mm -hmm. Just to go back to the fat, it's called a fat graft when you take fat from one part and put it in the yes, face, that's a correct. fat graft. How is that different from like an, an, an injectable uh, fluid into the face? Well, again, the fluid is already prepared. It's in a syringe. You could take it out of the box and take the syringe right. and take and a needle it. or a small cannula and actually inject the filler into the soft tissues mm. to, um, to smooth perform the skin to out, smooth right? the skin out right. and take care of the wrinkles and so forth. Whereas fat grafting requires removal of fat from another area, so it's just another area that you have to operate on. 
fortunately, uh, especially for the face, you can remove some fat through a very small little, what we call cannula, which is a um, little, uh, looks like a needle, but right. it has like a blunt tip at the end with oh, a little okay. side hole. And you can actually extract some fat with a syringe and um, separate the fat tissue from any fluid mm -hmm. and then use that fat, again, very carefully because all the untowered effects, as we mentioned earlier about the other fillers, is the same thing with the fat. Being careful not to inject any blood vessels, make sure that um, it's not injected too superficially because the fat tissue has a thicker, visco similar to the thicker viscous hyaluronic acid, those that are uh, a thicker substance. Right. It so also when you, when you say viscosity, when you say viscosity real fast, you mean that the the substance is thick, right? Right, exactly. So when you so, say like thicker viscosity, you mean that it, it has like a, a thicker substance. Yes, that exactly right. So it's analogous to, let's say, if we're comparing water right. to honey. Mm -hmm. So water would have less viscosity, right. honey has greater viscosity. Okay. And that 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 is for fillers, as far as describing right. fillers. But when we're describing fat tissue, it's actually, it's not a liquid form, it's basically right. fat right. substance. It's a structural material that's injected. But th my comparison actually is to discuss or to explain the uh, difference between the 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 solution thicker, the solution right, versus to the, something that's a, a firm right uh, soft tissue that's injected into right. the tissues right right so so when you inject that so so in comparison to the fillers it's the those fillers that have a thicker viscosity that we try to go deeper so we can hide it as much as possible so it's not as obvious not showing lumps or feeling like lumps same thing with the fat tissue you want to inject those deeper into the tissues so that it's not as obvious but yet you want to have um, augmentation or um, greater uh, volume right. in that area, like the cheeks, like we mentioned, or any mm. of the depressions to, to smoothen, skin, right? smoothen the tissues yeah. and so forth. Yes. Right, right. Uh, okay. So, which filler do you prefer? Is it hyaluronic acid? Well, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, most, most of the time, just so, on like a so, general basis. So, if I were to inject the fine lines, as we mentioned earlier, yeah. then I would use a um, substance such as hyaluronic acid that has a thin quality uh, that or more fluid quality that I can inject just underneath the skin layer so that I can fill out those fine lines. If I'm going to inject the lips, again, I'm looking for a thinner substance so it's not as um, lumpy. prominent or lumpy, yeah. right? And, um, as, and, and, and the lower eyelid, I also am looking for a substance that will not leave any lumps on the lower mm -hmm. eyelid. For those that I'm looking for greater volume to improve prominence of an area to fill out areas of depression, mm. then the substance is typically more of a viscous nature. Um, fat grafting or some of the hyaluronic acids that are thicker. available that are thicker, yes. So you you would still use hyaluronic acid in? Yes, you uh, can. Yeah. Uh, they have situation. they have they have one for example that uh, you can inject into to the fat tissue that can last uh, close to a year if not more. So I'll give you two questions for this one. One, which one would you prefer to give a patient hyaluronic acid or a fat graft? when it requires thicker viscosity and then to uh would a fat graph last longer than hyaluronic acid is there any way to determine that or is it just unpredictable so the selection of the filler depends on the patient's wishes right as but what, what would you prefer like well, what i would i prefer either or i right. mean i i it's feel that it, yeah exactly yeah. so some patients don't want to go undergo the the liposuction that's necessary right. to harvest sure. the fat and they would rather just undergo just the, simple, the, like, the material that's already prepared yeah. that we can do the injection right um again as i mentioned earlier the fat graft is unpredictable mm -hmm. and um some of it lasts forever some of it goes away right sometimes none of the uh, yeah. takes at all. And so that, that unpredictability can sometimes sway you to go with the hyaluronic uh, filler, hyaluronic which acid. is more predictable. Right. Does the hyaluronic acid dissolve completely over time? Is that like a fact? Yes, over time it does. Okay. And then last question, um, and I think this is a good one to end off since we kind of are going there. Which areas of the face are more likely to have a longer lasting filler injection 
than others? That's a very good question. Anytime you inject, um, there are a few factors that uh, may affect the longevity of the filler. One is the type of filler that you use, as we mentioned earlier. So the thinner materials tend to last less time. Uh, the location of the injection in areas of facial animation, such as like above the nose and the forehead, between the eyebrow areas, a very animated area when we frowned, frown. And so injecting those areas that are constantly in motion, especially around the mouth and so forth, the material tends to get kind of pushed around a bit. And uh, so, so it, it, may, it may dissipate of, faster. Yeah. Whereas if you inject in and around the cheeks where it's more static, mm -hmm. it may not move around as much. So it mm -hmm. may last longer. Um, lower eyelids, the same thing. It's not, there's not a whole lot of motion, a lot of pressure from the surrounding muscles. So it tends to stay there right. for a longer time. So it's, it depends on the, the product that you're using, the um, location, and that's it. Yeah. So basically areas of high motion tend to last longer. Correct. Now, or, sorry, so, sorry. Areas of, areas of um, a lot of motion in the face, filler tends to last a shorter period of time. So what, like it, around, let's say, like the, the mouth, how long would a filler last? Like just well, uh, again, a period it of may time. Take, it may last a few months. Right. Um, and, um, and then they would have to, the patient would have to come back and get it. And more, injected. right, exactly, at some okay. point. But but some of the things that there are some areas of the face, like for example, the area right in between the eyebrows where you have the the vertical lines. Mm. Um, one thing that you can do is you can put Botox there to paralyze that muscle so it's not in motion, right. and it may make that filler last longer. So just just to clarify, because I think there is a common misconception um, amongst lay people who aren't doctors, right? Botox is not a filler. Correct? No, it's a it's a paralytic. It paralyzes the muscle. Right. So, so that so that so that the muscle doesn't move back and forth mm -hmm. and create the little creases in the skin. Oh, uh, that's why when if you see a person with a lot of Botox, it's like they can't move their face. Exactly. Right. right. OK. Because right. I, th I think there is kind of a uh, distortion between that it's because people kind of refer to Botox as like a filler injection because it removes lines, but it actually paralyzes the muscles in your face. Correct. So so, you know, by paralyzing the muscle, you're preventing the muscle from moving back and forth. And so the lines are diminished and those are called the dynamic lines. So you just discussed Botox. So when would someone use Botox over fillers or filler over Botox? Is it up to the patient? It's just up to the, the patient's so, preference? So when we decide whether we're gonna go with Botox or fillers, we are targeting two different types of lines. Right. One is the dynamic line, the one that's in motion, like the, the vertical lines that are between your eyebrows right. or the lines that are around like your, your cheeks when cheek, you smile, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Those are those are lines that occur right. because of the dynamic motion during animation. Uh -huh. And Botox is typically used in areas of facial animation. And the places that we typically inject it is the muscle that uh, wrinkles your the, those vertical lines that are between your eyebrows. Uh, we use it also in the areas of the crow's feet, which are the little lines right. between, on the outer between part the of your eyelids. Right, yeah, right exactly. Eyes, yeah. And um, the forehead muscles, those are usually the places that we inject, mm -hmm. Botox. And that helps lessen the muscle pull that creates the creases that are on the skin. So those are called the dynamic lines. So on, on, the dynam on the dynamic lines, you inject Botox? You can inject Botox, right. correct. Now, in those same areas, you could have static wrinkles, those that are present when you're not animating. Right. And those will not go away with just Botox. They, that needs a filler material. Mm. So especially those, those vertical lines in between your brows, um, you can combine both the Botox and the filler to give you so probably out. the best result to give you a smoothened appearance in those areas. All right, I think that's it. Uh, I know I said last question like four or five questions ago, <laughs> but we just got caught up talking about Botox and fillers. Anyway... Uh, next week, I think we'll switch back to reconstructive surgery because we've kind of been uh, just doing cosmetic surgery the past couple podcasts, but uh, we will be back again next week with some really interesting topics. So stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe and thank you for watching the Plastic Surgery Podcast.